Khadija bin Khawayla is the first wife, or was the first wife of the Prophet Muhammad, um, peace be upon him. But she, her reputation preceded him. She was known as a very wealthy and very intelligent um, uh, businesswoman. She was entrepreneurial. She actually had, um, she was a tradeswoman, so she had a business of tra selling and trading goods. That um, she employed men, mostly men, who would travel as far as Syria on her behalf. And to be a woman in pre-Islamic Arabia at that time, doing something like that was pretty extraordinary. But it just, she's an exemplar in, in the faith, and she's considered one of the four perfect women that um, that we study in terms of just her story. But she, even after, uh, you know, he. he it received prophecy at the age of 40. They were married at that time. But even after Islam, she continued to uh, use her wealth in extraordinary ways to help um, to help Muslims. And, and, and so she was in her own right a very established like, a woman. She's an icon of, of the faith. Um, there's another woman. Her name is Um Amara, and she was also a female companion of the Prophet Muhammad. She was actually went to to join one of the, the great battles at that time as a nurse to tend to some of the wounded, but she found herself on the front lines of the battle. So she's kind of one of those warrior women who just went right out there and you know fought. And she was she's another amazing example. We have um, Fatima al Fahri. She was a 9th century um, a woman who established the Qarawin Ma a Mosque in Fez, Morocco, which is actually considered to be the very first university in the world. This was done by a Muslim woman. So again, things that people don't associate with Islam, first of all, but then with Muslim women are things that are like this. We have Lubna of Cordoba. She was an Andalusian, Andalusian intellectual and mathematician of the second half of the 10th century. And she was famous for her knowledge of grammar and the quality of her poetry. We have Maryam al astro Libia al Egilia. It's a, a title because she was a great mathematician and scientist who worked on astrolabes, which again was in the 10th century invented by, by Muslims. Zainab al Shahda from the 12th century, she was a great calligrapher and teacher. Razia Sultana from the 13th century, who was the first female Sultan of Delhi. Uh, Queen uh, Amina Azaria of the 16th century, and she was known for her military expertise, uh, especially her brilliant military strategy and in particular engineering skills in erecting the Great Wall camps during her various campaigns. So she's actually credited for doing something that um, our own president has not yet been able to do. She <laughs> built a wall. <laughs> the famous Saria Wall in Nigeria. So I think we need to let him know about her. <laughs> Um, but there's so many other extraordinary examples throughout history of Muslim women who've done amazing things that, again, just kind of show the role of women in Islam has been pretty consistent from the onset. It's a matter of, you know, I, you know having that strength of knowing who you are, knowing what God expects of you, and then acting on it.